Entergy is proud to support programming on LPB and greener practices that preserve Louisiana. The goal of our environmental and sustainability initiatives really is to ensure that our kids and future generations can be left with a cleaner planet. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you. Hi everybody, I'm Kara St. Cyr. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I'm joining you tonight from the LPB studios in Baton Rouge. And also a very happy Thanksgiving to you, Andre. And happy Thanksgiving to you too, Kara. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I'm Andre Morrow. For this half hour, we're bringing you this broadcast from Grand Isle, which is just opening up to try to begin the process of recovery after Hurricane Ida. It's gonna be a long, long recovery for the people here. I'm actually standing at the location that I believe to be where our family camp was. It was wiped away, owned by my sister and her husband, uh, but this is all that remains of it. We're gonna to talk to the mayor of Grand Isle, his hopes for the future of the island, and also some other people with some different ideas about what it will take to bring this island back. It's the last inhabited barrier island in Louisiana. It's a very important place in the state, important in the entire ecosystem for Louisiana. For now, though, let me send it back to Kara in the studio. We'll have much more with Andre this evening, but before we take you back to Grand Isle, some updates on the COVID front. Vaccination rates have improved slightly with about 48% of the state fully vaccinated. We continue to have one of the lowest COVID hospitalization counts in the country, despite the state's low vaccination rate. And experts recommend that getting those booster shots can help keep cases and hospitalizations down. Right now, anyone that's fully vaccinated and over the age of 18 is eligible for that booster. Just make sure it's been six months since your last dose of Moderna or Pfizer. And if you got the one dose of Johnson & Johnson, you can get Get that booster as early as two months after your final shot. And now to other news making headlines across the state. Nearly 15 months after Hurricane Laura struck, Lake Charles and Southwest Louisiana will finally see housing repair and rebuilding programs. The state is allocating $11.3 million in repair and rebuilding for Lake Charles while it waits for hundreds of millions of promised federal aid to arrive. Federal housing and disaster recovery money will finance it. Most of this will help low to moderate income households with grants capped at $50,000 per homeowner. Landlords of low to moderate rentals will also get essential help. Car travel is costing much more as the prices of gas soars. AAA says unleaded in our state averages about $3.12 a gallon, while the national average is $3.40. To try and keep costs from going even higher, President Joe Biden is ordering 50 million barrels of crude from the Petroleum Strategic Reserve. By mid to late December, more gas will be available. More policing is coming to Louisiana. Four cities in the state's southeast communities will receive a portion of a $139 million federal grant to hire new law enforcement personnel. New Orleans is among one of the four cities receiving the grant money. The U.S. Attorney's Office in New Orleans wrote in a news release that the city would receive $7.2 million. Bogalusa is in line for more than $219,000, while Tangipaho is set for $125,000. Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government was awarded $500,000. The funding is coming from the U.S. Department of Justice. The Pearl River map turtle, only found in Mississippi and Louisiana, will soon be listed as a threatened species by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The regional director of the agency said the turtle is at risk and needs our help. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is seeking grant money to help protect the species from extinction. You're looking at what's part of this part of the burrito levee system in Grand Isle. Part of it has held up very well. Parts of it like this, not well at all. 
David Camberdell, the longtime mayor of Grand Isle, tells us why the levy failed in some of these areas and why it didn't in some other areas. We got in the car, drove around the island with him. He pointed out some of the aspects of it, talked about some of the things they're doing, and all of it you'll find very interesting. Hurricane recovery, three months after Ida. A year after, the New York Times in 2020 listed Grand Isle as one of the places to go. A sort of global bucket list coming in at number 19 among 52 destinations around the world, ranking ahead of the Bahamas, ahead of Glacier National Park in Montana. Does a place appear more hauntingly beautiful when you know it's disappearing, the article asks? Only about six miles long and not even a mile wide, this sliver of sand and earth has a heavy burden. Louisiana's only inhabited barrier island serves as a literal buffer to destructive hurricane forces for inland Homa and New Orleans. The Times article urges, now is the time to go. In the early 1800s, pirates like Jean Lafitte frequented Grand Isle, becoming part of its romanticized history, also captured in novels and in movies. Its fishing and bird watching are treasures still intact because Grand Isle has managed to endure. It still hasn't met the one storm that would be its end. Like Last Island to the West, a 24 mile long 19th century playground for Louisiana's elite. The great storm of 1856 ended all that, erasing every hotel, casino and home, 200 lives and the island itself, leaving it submerged and in pieces. The 1893 Chenier Kamenata hurricane dealt the same fate to what was a bustling fishing village just northwest of Grand Isle. 2,000 people died. This damaged home was the only thing left standing. What was, was never again. And, and David Carmadell has been it, Grand Isle's okay. mayor for 24 so, years. You're looking at about uh, 16,000 uh, poles put in. He tells me the lights are back on for almost everybody. And all these power poles and lines got an upgrade from all those Ida took out. He's showing me around, pointing out damage. It's a routine he knows well. He grew up in politics. His father was mayor in 1965 when Hurricane Betsy hit. I, you know, you want the people out there to know that, you know, all my life and all dealing with my family and all my friends that are born and raised here, Every mile counts wherever this this storm passes. Yes. So in the meantime, you're looking at uh, you know the devastations on the western end where I live at, but it's closer to Port Fouchon, which if you look at it, you know the storm, the eye of the storm passed LA one. It went straight north and, and all the neighboring parishes and Terrebonne, Lafouche, and St. Charles, all of us to the right really got hit hard. There was twenty eight hundred places that got heavily damaged, but there was seven hundred of them that was destroyed. And then when FEMA came in with our building inspectors, you know, I, I just make sure that make it right. If a couple comes in and they got 52, 55, 60 percent, go back and look at it. Remember, that's their homes. How are they doing with people here and people getting have the help that they need? It all depends, you know. Like dealing with FEMA, you know, is people want they want something they want they want to fill out the paperwork. The problem is um, you deal with one and you get denied. And, you know, doing this for 40 years, experience with FEMA, it, I call it federal emergency missing in action sometimes. But in the meantime, some of it's good, but to tell you people you're denied when you lost everything, you right. can't afford insurance, or if you go through insurance, they don't pay you for something, you can go back to FEMA. So I had more people coming up to me and I said, listen, listen, tell me good, you gotta go through four to five times, don't give up. As long as you tell the truth, don't give up. And I said, it's gonna come, they're gonna get aggravated, and then, you know, and then they're going to settle with you. The mayor's biggest concern for almost 1,500 full-time residents is running water. I'm doing everything I can. Let me say, I, we, coming in, doing everything we can. But if you don't bring running water, your people's not coming back. You need water. The first thing you do in the morning is brush your teeth, go to the bathroom, whatever you got to do, you got to have water stay clean. Even in the most ideal of times, getting drinking water to Grand Isle is a chore. Ida's fury disrupted a pipeline that carries it. 
Carmadale is working to reconnect it until full repairs are made. And then when the storm came, it unburied and did like a snake. And it just went out like a hose pipe going out the marsh. Right, right. So right now we, we couldn't find the rest of it. So we came up with new pipe, but it took quite a few days to put that together. This line is tapped into Lafouche Parish. Okay. It goes down, and that's the valve right there. We just put that in last night. And today we opened the valve, and it's coming all the way from Port Fouchon, and it's coming this way. And we're going to push it in, and we're going to test all the lines, and then we're going to put a pump to go across the bridge. We see the mayor's own home and damage, located where that village of Chenier Caminata was. Then we cross the bridge back to Grand Isle to see what Ida did to the burrito levee. This is something new that I've experienced. It was so powerful, the hurricane, that it came over with 15 foot of waves and it just dug into this side. And it just pushed the sand all the way across the street. Yes. So that's something that's different. But if you look to the far right, you're gonna see the rocks that's working over there. Yep. That's, that's where we just put five segments, and we're asking the federal government to come in and put 32 more like that. And by putting, continue that for $50 million, you can turn around and save the coast and go all the way to the state park. But the main concern right now is, I call this Little Italy. It's, uh, you know, you canal. can come in, Little Canal, <laughs> and we call it Little Italy. In the meantime, we're gonna take the dirt back and try to fill it back up. We told the Corps, and I'm gonna tell it on television, any media I get on, if you think you're coming back to Grand Isle to just put sand, don't come. Because I don't have to go, we don't have to go and lobby every six months and knock on the senator's door and say, Congressman, Senator, we need this. Why don't you fix it right where I could go focus on another project, right. drainage, pumps, whatever, work with my people. In the meantime, we think we got them now. The plans, talking with the governor now, with his engineering, with Chip Klein, with CPRA, working closer with him and his team. The governor said the plans that we come up with, they do have rocks in it. It's, 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 we're working with the Corps, we're going to submit it. But I did let the governor to know today and let know that the Corps of Engineers, if you, don't, if you don't have no rocks in the plan, don't come. Because we're tired of, of just, just putting three packs of sugar on the table, throwing a glass of water every morning. It's washed away. Right. And they do the right thing. We spend a lot of money for nothing. And I don't want the people out there. I don't want them to think that I'm all Commodores always, the town of Grand Isle, they need to move away. No, it's worth saving. There's no crime. You see it with people rebuilding. Sounds good. As long as there's one grain of sand yep. to plant the American flag, we're gonna stay strong, and we're not going nowhere. Else. Back from Grand Isle with you now, and a lot of people say when you see damage like this and that repeats itself, why would anybody live here? Why even worry about keeping Grand Isle going? Well, all you have to do is listen to a guy who's lived here his entire life, went to college, came back, and ran the school here. And then that gives you an idea of why Grand Isle, once it's in your system, it never lets you go. What is it about Grand Isle? It's a great place to have grown up. Richard Augustine is 70 and the place he loves most in the world is fighting to recover from one of the worst hurricanes it's ever seen. But even the hardship and loss of right now doesn't dim rich memories of the island paradise he's called home his entire life. As a child, I had a flat bottom boat that we would put off right back here and go back for miles. Like in just, the bay? In the bay and just, and just oar for hours, and then when we got old enough to duck hunt, we would oar those boats out to a duck, uh, an island back there that had a pond of some kind or another, <laughs> and we would hunt ducks. Some of the main rules that we had from our parents were, when them street lights started to flicker, you better be on your way home. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and that's a true story, well, <laughs> I'm serious. We talked with Richard across the street from where he lives now, in the yard of the house where he grew up which is almost adjacent to one of the oldest buildings on the island. It was the main store of Grand Isle, run by his family. And as kids, we worked in the store. Like a general store? It was store? a general store. And, but it's mostly noted for, from the old folks, for being a, the first post office on Grand Isle. And the building, this part of the building is about 175 years old. Goodness, Somewhere in there, and it's lasted all these storms. Only college took him off the island, 
but he returned. I came back in uh, 74, 75 and was a teacher for about 14 years. And then I became principal for 27 after that. And I retired just a few years back, uh, four or five years ago. Keep in mind all he is seeing from hurricanes to oil spills to the battle to keep Grand Isle above water. He's seen a massive loss of land, which for decades has been a series of warnings for Louisiana. Not only here, but any place on the bay side uh, is just not there anymore. And my belief is that it's, if they don't take care of Grand Isle and the rest of the barrier islands, that New Orleans, the city of New Orleans, it's going to wipe out the West Bank and all. The city of New Orleans is going to be, you can fish off your back porch. That's my belief about the, uh, the land that's being torn away. The elevation of Grand Isle is seven feet above sea level, and the effort to maintain that has ramped up in the past three decades. The island is on the front lines of climate change and coastal land loss, facing one of the highest rates of relative sea level rise in the world. Tidal flooding is increasing. Most of the homes are raised up high on stilts with stricter building codes. There is no formula to stop hurricanes, though, which are as much a part of Grand Isle's history as fishing. You've seen many storms here before. Yes. Um, this one different than or as bad as the worst? The one that I remember the most was Betsy. Mm -hmm. Betsy was like... 65? We came in 65, September the 9th in 65. And it was like we came back here and we had to boil our water. We had probably three to four foot of water inside of this building. Uh, and it tore the island up also, but the island wasn't as populated then as it is now. So, and the people that don't remember Betsy will say that this was a heck of a lot worse. Since 1877, tropical storms or hurricanes have repeatedly pummeled the island. It feels the effects on average every two and a half years. A direct hit, like powerful Ida, every eight years. What are your thoughts as you look at the future here? I think Grand Isle will come back. I believe that it will be better than it was before because we'll learn from our mistakes. I also believe that uh, it'll take a while. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a year or two years or anything else. It's going to take time to bring it back and I'm hoping I'm still living while it gets to that point that I believe it should be. I just feel so sorry for all the people that were devastated, whether they were residents or whether they were uh, tourists or, or camp owners down here and this was their second home or their summer home. I really feel bad for them too because I see so many on Facebook that are saying it's time to go. You know, we have a place to sell and stuff like that. What's your word to them though and to everybody? Don't lose faith. Come back and, and help us rebuild a better place than we've had before and be a part of that. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. You can hear all over Grand Isle the sounds of machinery trying to rebuild things that have been damaged here. Damage is extensive, long time recovery. But I talked with Cynthia Lee Shang, she's the parish president for Jefferson Parish, and she has talked about an old idea, something that was done years, years ago, that could be a promising part of Grand Isle's future. Take a listen. How long have you been president? I've been president since January of 2020, so January, not quite two years. Oh, okay, yes. so January right, of 2020. Right before COVID. LSU's just won the national championship. <laughs> You're thinking this is going to be a great presidency, yes. right? Yes, My, myself, the council, were all fresh, just sworn in, and two months later, COVID. We had the COVID. first case, first COVID case in, in Louisiana in Jefferson Parish. So, and then the first of a series of hurricanes, the most recent, is what we're talking about here. Obviously, Ida. Ida. And what 
it's done to Grand Isle. Yeah. So, and to, in large part, just the, the road that goes up to where Kenner in that area is. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of damage. A lot of damage. I mean, we kind of separate, you know, Jefferson Parish into the upper Jefferson, which is protected by the hurricane levee protection system, and then lower Jefferson, which is outside the levee protection system in our coastal community. So, you know, Lafitte, Barataria, Crown Point, Lower Lafitte, and then of course Grand Isle. And hey boy, what a big difference it makes. Very different right? stories on what happened during the storm, very different stories on the recovery. Those areas that were protected by the levee system, the levee system really did well. It absolutely held. You know, that was a big investment that I say the, the people in office and, and, you know, the powers that be and the citizen groups who fought for that infrastructure post Katrina, it paid off. You know, in Jefferson Parish, we only lost one life during the storm. And had that levee protection system not been in our most dense area, it would have been much more property loss, perhaps much more human life loss, you know. So um, it, it did its job. Now, outside the levee protection system, took a much bigger hit, a much bigger punch from Hurricane Ida. And Grand Isle is but up and down the bayou as you come closer to Grand Isle from north to south. You, you see it. You see it, you know. Here we are in Grand Isle. It looks different, you know, with the energy poles being straight and replaced, so it, that has a different look. And every time I come down here, you know, you can see the recovery. It's a longer recovery process. You're talking about Grand Isle, you're talking about rebuilding whole systems, whether it's energy, whether it's water systems, whether it's gas systems. It's just a complete rebuild of the infrastructure systems. I also represent the Lafitte area. We have two strong mayors in both of those communities. Same storm, very different look. Grand Isle looked like a bomb went off, uh, very dry, a lot of sand. In Lafitte, Barataria, Crown Point, very wet, very muddy, just a completely different look with, you know, a little bit different problems. Grand Isle has been through this ever since there's been a Grand Isle, okay? And the island geographically is in a different place now than it was 50, 60 years ago. But what does the future look like as we maybe learn from mistakes or have some technology that helps? Are there things that will aid in a, a bounce back or coming back? Grand Isle is a barrier island habitable that is just very vulnerable. And so when we look at rebuilding this island, we have to rebuild in a more resilient way, in a more sustainable way, understanding you know, how vulnerable we will continue to be. But, but the beauty about Grand Isle, it's not just the geographic location, it is a culture and it's a way of life and it's people and it's generation of families that have been here. Um, and also you have residents, but also it's a coastal community and it's a tourist spot. You know, people love to spend summers here and have second homes here. So there's a lot there, but we, we can see that the more modern development and the more modern home construction fared much better um, than many of the older homes. And when we build back, we will certainly build back stronger. And we're fighting for, you know, the protection uh, system, you know, in terms of putting back the rocks and, and building the barriers and, you know, our burrito levees. We're, we're fighting to, to build that back stronger. And those have done pretty well, but at the same time, always vulnerable. But the rocks, I've heard time and time again, people are really touting the rocks. The area that was protected by the rocks did better, and the rocks helped build the land back because, you know, the sediment goes over the rocks and it, it kind of stays there. So it, it serves a dual purpose in protecting the actual levee, but also in terms of you know, supplementing the land right there. So um, we'll fight for all that and, and fight for our way back of life, but it is a long road to recovery. We, you know, Grand Isle is, um, has water supply to it from a 30 mile pipeline, you know, from Barataria. And so we've been working very hard to get that water line back in place. Um, but we have grand visions for the future of Grand Isle. Any that you want to share? Well, absolutely. You know, we've always come to Grand Isle by car, and it's a two hour, two and a half hour drive, depending on traffic. But our teams now, because we're coming here so often, have been going by boat, and it's a beautiful boat ride. And so when you can connect Grand Isle to the greater New Orleans area and to Upper Jefferson by, you know, a half hour drive to Lafitte and a half hour boat ride to Grand Isle, all of a sudden, you know, it changes tourism for Jefferson Parish. Mm -hmm. It is a game changer for us. And you can take a trip, you know, out, out of state people can take a trip to New Orleans and get that traditional trip with um, Bourbon Street and great restaurants and then also have a beach trip as part of that. Yeah. Um, and it, it really, it, it does change it. So it would be its own economy. You could put the fishermen back to work. Um, just imagine bed and breakfasts and condos here and, you know, staying in a bed and breakfast in Lafitte and taking a, a ferry to Grand Island, spending the day and going back or vice versa, staying on Grand Isle. Yeah. And, 
you know, so we're going to build back with um, bike trails and golf carts and have a real coastal community and it's going to be all new. You know, it's interesting too, and that's historically what people did here because boats went out to Last Island and boats ferry to Grand Isle and different places back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, that was the mode of transportation. There weren't the roads and cars yeah. at the time. So it's kind of like so going it all back. comes back around again. Yeah, yeah. To, to what worked then. And um, I, again, you mentioned a day trip, you know, I mean, most people don't do that, but that's. It, it, it could be a beautiful day trip. And it, you know, we all vacation in Florida. A lot of us from here, we vacation in Florida. It's an easy ride, but we can start vacationing here in our own parish. One other major important thing about Grand Isle being the only inhabited barrier island Absolutely. in Louisiana is that it is a protection for New Orleans. It is, and it's and people need to understand that somebody takes the first punch, and if you don't have Grand Isle, then you know we take the punch further up north, and so you know you you have to protect. You know it's our culture and it's our history, but it serves a real purpose for us as well, operationally in terms of you know storm protection. Everyone, that's our show for this week. Remember, you can watch anything LPB wherever you are with our LPB PBS app. The download is free from your app store. You can watch LPB news and public affairs shows, as well as other Louisiana programs you've come to enjoy over the years. And please like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Kara St. Cyr and everyone at Louisiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Andre Mora with this special broadcast, Peril in Paradise, Grand Isle. Thanks for watching. Until next time, that's the state we're in. Entergy is proud to support programming on LPB and greener practices that preserve Louisiana. The goal of our environmental and sustainability initiatives really is to ensure that our kids and future generations can be left with a cleaner planet. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you.